Good morning. You're listening to FloorDaily.net, and I'm Kemp Parr. This morning, my guest is Bill Blackstock, the president and CEO of the RFCI, the Resilient Floor Covering Institute. Bill, how you doing? Good morning, Kemp. Doing great. You had a recent meeting at Pelican Hill in Newport Beach, California, and I want to get to that in just a minute. For the benefit of my listeners, you've been at the helm of the RFCI, the trade association that looks after the resilient floor covering business for about a year. Your background, you spent three years at J&J, which you know became a part of Engineered Floors while you were there. And 29 years at Millican, and that's where you met Dean Thompson, whose role you took here. And you're also a graduate of Georgia Tech. Go Jackets. Yes, sir. That covers it. Okay. So let's start out with how's business in the resilient category? It's an interesting time this year. There are all types of dynamics, as you well know, in the marketplace. I started the meeting at Pelican Hill with a listing of headwinds and tailwinds. And from a headwind standpoint, there's some significant forces out there. I'll tell you, there's also some good news. One, from a single family standpoint, Camp, right now, there are about four major forces that are causing some adjustment, interest rates being one of those four things on the single family side. We have seen some calming there after a record performance during the COVID time period in single family. And of course, all of my comments are governed by uh, new construction and remodeling, with remodeling being the larger of the two. Multifamily, there's an inventory issue there. So multifamily continues to be strong in the marketplace, will have to continue to be strong for some time, just based on uh, the availability of inventory. Some of the economists I'm talking to from a single family standpoint are saying when some of these headwinds subside on the single family side, that it's not going to be a gentle growth back up, that we possibly could be in an inventory situation on single family as well. So the majority of economists are not terribly long-term pessimistic on the single family side and quite the opposite as far as the rebound. And as you've reported on, the commercial market lags the residential market traditionally. So it's been improving. We had residential exploding during COVID. You had some downward forces on the uh, commercial side. Well, commercial over the course of 2022 has been growing. And when you look at the sub-segments within that, it's really interesting as well. That growth has been shared by education, healthcare, the office market. You've seen some of the indicators out there about some positive forces as the office market continues to settle out what its long-term uh, deployment model is going to be. But it's been very positive in that. Hospitality, business travel has returned. So that's been very positive. In all the segment, great news on the resilient side, is resilience been taking share. There's been tremendous innovation and resilient on a host of fronts. Uh, some markets that were traditionally other categories, I was just amazed at how quickly they switched to resilient formats. Things that had been in one category for as much as 30 years, quickly transferring on that. So even though 2022 is a challenging year, it's going to be a good year for us. There are some pundits in the industry who are thinking that potentially in 23, if not 23, 24, the resilient category will pass the carpet category as far as total revenue in the sector. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. What are some of the challenges that the resilient category is facing? When you look at Kager compound annual growth over the last yeah. several years, we've had to uh, scale on that front. And you've, re- you've also reported on, I-, I believe it's now, construction of 12 new plants in North America on top of the infrastructure that was already there. Infrastructure around the world as well. Uh, supply chain was an issue for most everybody. It impacted our industry as well. One of the challenges has been the growth itself and in investments in infrastructure. And thankfully, our membership has been very quick to invest on that front. Kemp, another key challenge out there is on the labor side of things. You look at job openings and unemployment rates that are very low, and there are challenges on that front of getting people to come to work for companies. I'm going to be in Nashville, I think it's the end of next week at the FCEF board meeting. I'll tell you, Kemp, I think based on the numbers, we're still looking at the front edge of this thing over the course of the next 10 years within our industry on the installation side of things where so many wonderful stories exist of people making wonderful careers, the problem is going to get a lot worse over the course of the next 10 years. We're going to be talking about that at the board meeting. That labor issue not only affects the installation side of it, but it also, like you don't mention the 12 factories, it, it, it affects the factory workers. You know, that's a hurdle for shifting some of the source of where Resilient is made to this country. So the meeting, I know you had an economist, you had Lawrence Young, the economist with the National Association of Realtors there. What was his message? Similar to what you've just been telling me? Yes, sir. Very similar to that. He 
he uh, spoke to single family, multi family on the uh, commercial side. And uh, I got to tell you, over the course of the last four years, in particular, Lawrence Young has uh, been a favorite economist of mine. As you well know, he uh, is on the national news feeds most every week. I think most of the sentiment I expressed on the uh, segments were things that he agreed with. We're all watching the interest rate aspects and inflation closely, and he all, often comments on the labor issue as well. So at the meeting, were there any new members there? And I think you had an election as well, right? Yes, sir. Herb Upton is chairman. Mm -hmm. He continues to be chairman. He's doing a fantastic job. Uh, Russ Rogue of HMTX was elevated to vice chairman. Mm -hmm. And Baron Frith of CFL became our secretary of treasurer. I'm going to be with Baron next week. So we were excited about those board elections. He's the president of CFL. Mm -hmm. uh, Great guy. Uh, any new members or any other highlights? Not at this one. From a membership standpoint, keep your eye uh, on the membership side. A lot of discussions that are taking place. One of the things when you look back over the course of the last several years has been the growth of RFCI with most of the manufacturers of resilient products becoming members of that. Uh, as you well know, we have both manufacturing entities who are part of RFCI who are making the product. We also have key members in the supply chain as well. So uh, all in all, uh, in excess of 40 members within the organization right now, and uh, and, and will continue to grow yeah. with the growth that we have in the industry. We took uh, some time and recognized Russell Grizzle, as you well know. Uh, Russell announced his retirement be at the end of this year, but this was our fall right. meeting, our last chance to celebrate Russell and Janice, and uh, we had a, a fun time uh, during an evening celebrating his contributions to the industry, which are incredible, and uh, his uh, leadership in RFCI. Right. And most people know Russell's stepping down as the leader at Mannington, and you have history with him because he was at Millican many years ago when I you learned, were there. So He was my boss, and I uh, I learned volumes from him. Okay. Any other key initiatives that you're focused on for the yeah. coming period? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to give you four or five quick bullets to keep your eye on. One is, Kemp, you, you know the value of CEUs on the commercial side mm -hmm. to the design community. Uh, keep your eyes open for announcements that will be coming from us over the course of the next month as we add a second and a third new CEU to our CEU platform. That platform can be found at our website, rfci.com. Beautifully responsible. Uh, we had a uh, summary of our results um, uh, in their complex results that we're looking at, engagement of the platform. We touch millions of people with that. 2023 is going to be another big year for Beautifully Responsible in uh, sharing the mes message of resilience out there. And Kemp, as you've been reporting, Echomedes is a, a, a key area that we're seeing almost weekly, if not every two weeks in the news. As you've been reporting, uh, Echomedes is continuing to grow in its importance uh, to the design community as it relates to looking at various environmental certifications and the like. RCI has been there since the earliest moments with Echomedes in our industry. EC3 on the carbon side, everyone rightfully is focused on carbon in a big way. RCI was right there thanks to Jane Rohde's leadership with that EC3 tool, which is a key part of the carbon discussion that's taking place. And the last couple of things quickly is that we've launched a renewal effort on industry average EPDs. You know the importance of EPDs in our industry. About every five years, we go through a renewal process on that. We have launched that. We'll be uh, conducting that through 2023. And one to keep your eye on is a Sure Certified. It's a rigid core certification. That it, uh, it's a multi-attributes uh, certification. Uh, keep your eye on that over the course of this year. There'll be a great deal of traffic from RSCI on that front. Well, it's good to catch up with you, Bill. And thanks for telling us about what happened in your fall meeting. Again, been talking to Bill Blackstock, the president and CEO of RFCI. And you've been listening to Kempar and FloorDaily.net.